Norfolk, Virginia has some great weather to go along with some awesome outdoor activities throughout the city. However, if we do get heavy rain, it does tend to flood in the city of Norfolk. Also, I gotta tell you, traffic is downright awful. I remember when my family and I were moving into Hampton Roads, it was really overwhelming deciding what city we were gonna settle on. So I feel I know what you might be thinking if you're getting stationed here to one of our military bases or you're just new to the area and don't know what city you're gonna end up living in. So I'm gonna go over the good, the bad, and the ugly about Norfolk, Virginia. And I had everything on videotape. Good, bad, and ugly. This way, you'll know what it's like to live here in the city. That way you can make the most informed decision for you and your family. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so the first pro I wanted to go over for Norfolk, Virginia, I already mentioned in the beginning of the video, and that would just be the outdoor activities that you're able to do in the city of Norfolk. My family and I, we love going to the Norfolk Zoo. The Norfolk Zoo has close to 700 animals spread across over 50 acres of property. Personal tip, make sure you hit the Asia exhibit. It's home to the tigers, the monkeys, and my personal favorite, the red pandas. Also, if you have young kids, check out the fountain. In the summertime, it's a great place to take your kids to cool off. I know my daughters thoroughly enjoyed that when they were younger, especially during the summertime. Another cool thing to do in the city of Norfolk, Virginia is heading down to Waterside. Waterside is a collection of shops and restaurants along the Elizabeth River. If you look across the river, you can actually see the city of Portsmouth, Virginia. Additionally, throughout the year, there are many festivals held by fest events in the city of Norfolk at Waterside. One of my favorite ones happens every June, and that would be the Harbor Fest. Harbor Fest is actually the longest running maritime festival throughout the country. There's also many additional concerts throughout the year at Waterside, and there's a lot of great restaurants and bars you can enjoy in Waterside as well. Two of our favorite restaurants when we're at Waterside would be Rocky Mountain Grill or Stripers. Additionally, if you're just looking for a good time with you and your friends, there's some awesome bars down there as well. You have the Blue Moon Tap House, and if you're a little adventurous, there is PBR Norfolk, where they actually have a mechanical bull you can ride. So if you've watched my channel at all before, you know I really enjoy fishing. And the city of Norfolk has a lot of great spots to offer. One of them I already mentioned, the Elizabeth River. Elizabeth River has a lot of great options if you're looking for striped bass, drum, and it's actually in the winter months, one of the best places to catch speckled trout as they're running all throughout there during the fall and winter months. Additionally, you can go out for some larger fish in the Chesapeake Bay. One of the last things I wanted to mention about Norfolk and outdoor activities is actually the Elizabeth River walking trail. Personally, I've actually never hiked the whole 10 and a half miles, but it starts right around Norfolk State and heads north all the way up towards NOB. It's a great way to view the city, not only in the rural parts, but also in the downtown area. It gives you a whole different perspective on the city. So we already went over one of the good things about living in Norfolk, Virginia. As I said, we're gonna go over some of the bad things about living in Norfolk, Virginia. My first one would be the flooding in the city of Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia is very low lying to sea level. Additionally, as I mentioned, it's right along the Elizabeth River and the Chesapeake Bay. Therefore, whenever we get heavy rains or we get nor'easters or even the occasional hurricane, Norfolk is very prone to flooding. Uh, this not only affects your housing, but one of the major things with Norfolk, it really messes with traffic, as a lot of the major thoroughfares throughout Norfolk are very prone to flooding. Additionally, it doesn't always just take heavy rain to cause flooding, as tidal flooding can cause issues in Norfolk, Virginia, whenever we have a big storm come through or there's a, a strong tide. So if you're living in Norfolk, Virginia, Flooding is going to be something you have to think about, have to consider. So make sure if you're looking for an area to live in Norfolk, Virginia, you take a look at where it is in the flood zone so you can make the right decisions. So one of the things I really like about the city of Norfolk, Virginia, I think it doesn't really get talked about at all. Definitely not enough. And it's something my family and I really enjoy about the city of Norfolk, Virginia. And that would just be the sporting teams. Yeah, there's no major league team here in Norfolk or all of Hampton Roads, but the city of Norfolk has some great sporting teams. 
The largest would be the Norfolk Tides, which is the AAA team of the Baltimore Orioles. They play along the Elizabeth River at Harbor Park. The other professional sports team in Norfolk, Virginia would be the Norfolk Admiral. They're actually a minor league hockey team in the East Coast Hockey League. They play in the Norfolk Scope. Gotta tell you this year, they're not doing very well. I believe they've only won two games and they've lost something like nine games. I can't emphasize enough how fun it is to go to a hockey game, especially if you've never gone before. So not only do we have professional sports teams, we do have two great colleges in the city of Norfolk, Virginia that have some awesome sporting activities. First would be Norfolk State, home of the Spartans. They have a great basketball team, but it's also fun to head to their football games as well. And then my alma mater, which is Old Dominion University, home of the Monarchs. Currently, we're in the middle of football season, about to finish it off, but then we move into basketball season for women's and men's. Great time to go at the Chartway Arena. And then you move into baseball. There's plenty of sporting activities to take advantage of here in Norfolk, Virginia. I just don't think it gets talked about it much, but that is my number two pro. So we're moving into the ugly part of living in Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> Traffic is absolutely awful in the city of Norfolk. To be honest with you, it's absolutely awful in pretty much every city. Well, not pretty much. It is awful in every city in Hampton Roads. The city of Norfolk tends to just be worse than any of the other cities throughout Hampton Roads. When I was looking at data about traffic in Hampton Roads, I actually came across a website called getjerry.com. It looks like it's actually an insurance website. I'll put a link in the description below. But one stat it mentions is the average driver in the city of Norfolk, Virginia spends 56 hours of their life in traffic every year. That's astounding to me when you think about it. Just out of curiosity, how much time do you think you spend in traffic every year? I would love to hear it. Put it in the comments below as I'm just curious if it's more or less than the 56 hours we see here in Norfolk, Virginia. This website mentions one of the major reasons traffic is so bad in Norfolk, Virginia is the simple fact that all of the major choke points throughout Hampton Roads tend to reside in Norfolk, Virginia. Those would be the Berkeley Bridge leading into the downtown tunnel. You have the Midtown Tunnel. And then during rush hour traffic, if you're heading to NOB Norfolk Naval Base, Interstate 564 is particularly tough. And then the worst of the worst, regardless whether it's rush hour traffic or not, would be the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. This bridge connects the city of Norfolk to the city of Hampton, Virginia, over the Chesapeake Bay. And I gotta tell you, traffic here is awful no matter what time of the day you're there. And right now they're actually expanding the bridge. So they're actually doing a lot of major construction as they work to make the tunnel and the bridge larger to be able to handle more capacity. All right, so we've already gone over two pros and two cons of living in Norfolk, Virginia. My question to you, can you handle Norfolk, Virginia? If you're liking this video, please make sure you hit that like button below. That way we can get this video out to as many people as possible. Also, don't forget to tap that subscribe button below. This is the type of content we publish every week here on this channel. My name's DJ Parker, and I'm part of a team of realtors here in Hampton Roads. If you're thinking about making a move into Hampton Roads and you need some assistance, we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to us, phone, text, email, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Can't wait to hear from you. So let's go ahead and get on to the additional pros and cons of living in Norfolk, Virginia. So one of the great things about Norfolk, Virginia that I personally love is you're never gonna run out of awesome places to eat food, nor are you ever gonna run out of a great place to have a beer, as there's plenty of great breweries throughout the city. There's so many different restaurants in Norfolk, some of my family and I's personal favorites. Uh, Freemason Abbey in downtown Norfolk has been there for many years. Also, if you like diners, you have the Egg Diners, one of the most famous restaurants in all of Norfolk would be Dumars, has some of the best ice cream you can ever imagine. In downtown Ghent, my favorite place is No Frill Bar and Grill. All right, so now we're back into the bad again. And this one is actually depending on who you ask. I'm actually gonna use some data, so it's not necessarily my opinion, but the number three con for Norfolk, Virginia for me would be the school grades. I'm gonna use a website called niche.com, put the link in the description below. It gives Norfolk Public Schools an overall grade of C+. To give you an idea, the city of Virginia Beach was given an A, the city of Chesapeake was given an A-. So when you look at some of the other cities in Hampton Roads, unfortunately, according to niche.com, the city of Norfolk just doesn't stack up. As far as high school goes, there is a total of five high schools in the city of Norfolk, Virginia. According to niche.com, Mari would be the highest performing one, with Booker T. Washington being the 
the lowest performing one. Make sure you do your research on this as schools is something very important, especially if you have children in school, but also if you're just looking to purchase a house as the school districts can be very important to the value of your house as well. All right, so we're moving back into one of the good things about Norfolk, Virginia. So I mentioned traffic is horrible in Norfolk, Virginia and all of Hampton Roads, but one of the good things about living in Norfolk, Virginia is it's pretty centrally located no matter where you're going in Hampton Roads. As if you're heading to the oceanfront from downtown Norfolk, you're looking at about 23 minute drive without traffic. If you're heading the opposite way, maybe you wanna go do some shopping in Williamsburg or heading into Bush Gardens, you're looking at about 54 minutes as far as military bases go. If you're heading into Virginia Beach looking to go to Oceana, you're looking at about a 25 to 30 minute drive. Little Creek is about 21 minute drive from downtown Norfolk. If you're heading over across the water to one of the other bases, Eustis is about a 45 to a 50 minute drive without traffic and Langley Air Force Base is right around 40 minutes without traffic. But as I mentioned, if you're going across the water, you're gonna be dealing with that tunnel and there's never not traffic. So make sure you factor that in when you're thinking about where to live in the city of Norfolk or within Hampton Roads. The largest base in all of the world is actually located here in Norfolk and that would be the Norfolk Naval Base. Norfolk International Airport is located in Norfolk. So that's why this is one of my pros for living in the city of Norfolk, Virginia. All right, so we're right back into the bad, or you could call this the ugly. Ugly, ugly. <laughs> and that would be the tolls and tunnels you're gonna deal with if you're living in the city of Norfolk, Virginia. So as far as tunnels, we kinda already covered them in traffic, but that would be the downtown tunnel, the midtown tunnel, and the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel as those three spots are really gonna give you headaches no matter what time of the day it is, as for whatever reason, tunnels usually cause a lot of traffic issues as people slow down, there tends to be accidents in the tunnel. So another thing about those tunnels in Norfolk, Virginia, is you're gonna to have to pay to go through them as the downtown tunnel and midtown tunnels both have a toll associated with them. As far as what you're gonna pay, you gotta get an easy pass. If you're using an easy pass, you're gonna pay around $2.50. I'll actually put the rates here on the screen, but if you don't have an easy pass, as I said, you're making a huge mistake, but if you don't have an easy pass, you're gonna be paying over $6 to go through the tunnel each way. And that is why it's truly, to me, a con of living in Norfolk, Virginia. So we've gone over the four pros and four cons of living in Norfolk, Virginia. We're actually gonna begin to the fifth pro and con. And you might think I'm crazy, but they're actually the same thing, as this thing is the weather. And it all depends on who you talk to, whether it's a pro or it's a con of living in Norfolk, Virginia. So I'm gonna look at it like it's both a pro and a con and give you the pros and cons of each. So one of the pros would just be the sunshine. We have beautiful weather here in Norfolk and Hampton Roads. Additionally, we have some pretty mild temperatures. It really doesn't get very cold in the winter time. Occasionally it will get chilly, but as far as the overall average temperatures, it sticks right around 30 degrees or higher during the winter time. And therefore, another pro, we really don't have a lot of snow. So if you're coming from the north and you're used to feet of snow, you will never see that in Norfolk, Virginia. And when I say snow falls a year, very few and far between that we get more than two inches of snow. So with all that said, there is some cons of our weather. In the summertime, it's brutally hot because from June to August, you're looking at temperatures well over 90 degrees. The weather in Norfolk, Virginia is very muggy. It's interesting, you have people come here who are visiting from Nevada or Arizona and they swear, even though it's not a desert, the humidity makes it hotter here than what they feel back home. I'm not sure that's exactly true, but I can tell you the mugginess, the humidity, makes it unbearable sometimes during the summertime. And then another con, we kind of already mentioned it when we talked about flooding, is just the occasional hurricanes we do get here in Norfolk, Virginia and Hampton Roads. Hurricane season runs from June 1st all the way to November 30th. So that would be one of the cons I think you gotta think about if you're living closer to the coast is the fact that you might have to deal with hurricanes. So before deciding whether Norfolk, Virginia is right for you, I think you need to do as much research as possible. I actually just recently did a video on the city of Virginia Beach and the cons of living there. You can find that here. Additionally, I've done a lot of pros and cons videos on other cities in Hampton Roads. Take a look at those here. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button. If you're thinking about moving to Hampton Roads, we wanna help you. Cannot wait to hear from you. Until the next time, see you on the next video.